We have talked about policies, security policies, and the importance of policies, and the reasons for policies. And uh, part of the reason, of course, is to guide us in terms of doing risk management. And again, we've talked about the documentation, and I hope that you have uh, looked up that uh, part one of the uh, common criteria and found uh, that diagram outlining risk and vulnerability and exploits and threats and threat agents and assets and etc 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 and all the relation interrelation between them um, because that's what we're going to be getting into is risk and risk management now risk uh, there's a true truism that uh, uh, I believe it was Don Parker said that uh, uh, there is no you have no risk of encountering a computer virus that is because risk always involves an element of probability and it's not probable that you will encounter a virus these days. It is an absolute certainty. So that's that's making two points. One about uh, viruses and the, the prevalence of viruses and, and the other about the probability, the likelihood that is always part of risk and risk assessments and analysis. Um, the uh, the policy is is going to guide you. Uh, your understanding of your assets is is going to guide you. You're always talking about risk to an asset, and and remember, you know, we're, risk is not just one thing. Risk is a number of things. You have a you know a number of threats. Uh, therefore, you're going to have a number of risks that you are going to have to address with a number of, of safeguards. And of course, some safeguards are going to uh, protect you from multiple risks and other safeguards are not. Uh, and having come to safeguards, I suppose that we have to go into uh, talking about the different um, uh, ways of addressing risk. There, we have risk uh, assessment, that is, you know, figuring out whether or not there is a risk, risk analysis, how big is the risk, and what can we possibly do about it, and risk management, that is actually doing something about it. And risk management is also very often known as risk mitigation. Uh, that is when we are putting controls, safeguards, countermeasures in place so that we can address the the threats and the risk from the threats so that's that's mitigation that's that is the you know basically uh the bulk of what we are doing in security uh we are putting countermeasures in place we are uh dealing with the risk in that way by mitigating it now the uh, uh, there are other factors in, involved in risk. One is uh, risk avoidance. Okay, uh, this area of business, this activity, uh, this technology, whatever it may be, is too risky. We will avoid it altogether, and and therefore we will avoid the risk involved in. Uh, in dealing with it in, uh, you know, the risk that it will pose to our business, to our enterprise, uh, if we were to engage in it. So that's, that's avoidance. We'll just, you know, we'll avoid it altogether. We won't, we won't do that. Then there's risk acceptance. And uh, there's uh, a nice uh, example of risk acceptance that I, uh, got from one of the uh, candidates when I was dealing with uh, physical security one time, and he uh, worked for a casino. And the casino, um, they 
uh, uh, well, we were talking about air conditioning because, of course, uh, air conditioning uh, is important for uh, computer equipment. You have to keep it at the right temperature. You have to make sure, you know, it generates an awful lot of heat sometimes. You have to make sure you, you dissipate the heat properly. And, uh, of course, casinos, uh, in this particular case, particularly, uh, Las Vegas is a very hot uh, climate and uh, there's a lot of air conditioning. And, they, you know, we were talking about the fact that you don't want to have your uh, air conditioning tied to the building's air conditioning because then if there's a heat wave, you're in contention with everybody else. You know, you want your own air conditioning system. And he said they did have their own air conditioning system and management one day that it was a particularly hot heat wave told them to divert the uh, air conditioning to the casino floor. And uh, by doing so, uh, the temperature went up and they fried $100,000 worth of telecommunications equipment. Now, the thing was, this is a actually a good example of uh, risk acceptance because risk acceptance is not just simply, okay, we will accept the risk. Risk assessment is making an assessment of the potential risk and seeing, okay, it is worth accepting that risk. And in this particular case, it was worth accepting the risk because a casino, of course, makes you know a ton of money from keeping people in the casino. And by conditioning and increasing the air conditioning and cooling their uh, gambling floor, they kept people in the casino, and of course they made a lot more money. Uh, they, you know, the hundred thousand dollars to replace the telecommunications equipment that was pocket change. So that is uh, acceptance on the basis of doing the calculation and and knowing that uh, yes, that risk is acceptable, that it is worth accepting that risk. So, risk mitigation, risk avoidance, risk acceptance. And the, the final one that we tend to talk about in terms of dealing with risk is risk transfer. And uh, these days, most people talk about risk transfer in terms of insurance. And that is possibly not a really good example because you have to be... Uh, very concerned these days with how the policy is written and whether or not you actually are covered if something is, is uh, you know, a, a risk to you, a threat to you. Um, does the insurance, is the insurance going to actually pay off if something bad happens? And uh, I think a better example, possibly, is during the pandemic, of course, we had the food delivery services and people did not want to go to the grocery stores because there was a risk of infection of you know, getting you know catching covid from uh, people who were in the stores and and so this is i i think literally a a good example of transferring the risk to someone else you are paying someone else to go to the store for you to get the food they are taking the risk of shopping in the store uh, so they're taking on that risk. You are paying them, and you get, uh, you know, your your risk is reduced because you don't have to go to the store and they deliver the food, and you don't even have to see them. You you know, pay them by credit card and so on and so forth. So, risk transfer—the last of our four ways of dealing with risk.